Gwynn. Where do you suppose those boys are going to go? And how long are they going to be from home? Boys? What boys? This is my boy, Beth. This one by you. They gave up being boys years ago. You heard them? So it's none of my business where they go. Willie! Where do you think you are going, my girl? Mom, I'm going after them. Sit down! You are going nowhere. <laughs> Gwilly, Mum, Harrod has fetched her clothes and gone. Gone? Gone where? Down by Nuns, of course. I couldn't stop her to look after the boys because nobody else is doing it. Well, I'll go and have a word with her. First, you will have a word with me. Now, get out of my way, Beth. Please, to listen to me, Gwilym, or there may be a couple more missing by the time you get back. Well? Look what she brought back from there now, just. Look! Your door socks. Look! A wind shirt. Filthy. Ach, And When your rat says the sheets on their bed are fit for shoe rags. And God only knows what she's feeding them. She's got blowflies buzzing round the pantry as big as black pats. She gets every night too drunk to stand and language like an old Rodney on her. And one of the men in her back room have been summonsed for stealing three gold watches from out of a jewellers in Ponty. Well, I'm not having an Arad living in a place like that. Well, I'm not having any of them in a place like that. The boys can choose for themselves. But why they should choose to live in dirt is beyond me. But I've given up trying to understand them. Choose? What choose? with people coming from all over the country looking for jobs. Must they dig coal all day and tramp the streets all night hunting for apartments and a good home here waiting for them? Oh, Beth, I can see that you are on their side. But I'm getting unharried out of there. Nobody's side. You're all driving me mad here. Yeah, nobody's side. Peace. Well, you... Your father is very ashamed of you. I hear you've been saying some unheard of things down in Calvaria. Yes, Mum. Good. Good boy. Your mum is so glad she could scream. Beth? Well, it's time somebody told those sanctimonious humbugs. All the nastiness in their own minds, and they put it all off into some poor girl and start preaching about purity and sin as if she was any different from the rest of us, except for worse luck and a bit less sense. They make me sick. As bad as he is, girl. Yes, Gwilly Morgan. And you are as bad as that pack down by there. I can see now where they get it from. No wonder I'm rearing a nest of scorpions in this house. It's you it is. Go on, scratch. Who did that to you? Nobody. Fell down on the mountain. Hold up. Up. Give up. Oh, that's it. How many were there? Five. Oh, I wish I could lay my hands on them. I'd have them flat if they were the size of a house. You're lucky there's nothing broken? L lucky? You go over there, William, tomorrow. It's worth losing a turn for. You tell that teacher we are having Hugh out of there and you ought to be ashamed for allowing it. Ash, no, man. But what is the point of trying to get learning in his head if they're going to half kill him before he gets it there? It's not worth it. Oh, go on, man. Boy, I'll have worse than that before he goes to his grave, madam. Now then, you willing to go back there tomorrow? Yes, Dada. Right. You going to hide from them or stand up to them? Yes, Kieran. Tafith, it's the big ones he's in with. Didn't you hear him telling you? I mean, you want your head red man talking to him like that. Morning. Good morning, Mr. Evans. It is nice to see you. I had heard that you were back staying with your dad for a bit. Uh, yes. Is there anything I can do for you? I rather hoped you might be able to throw some light on that bit of a fracas last week. Bit of a what? With the incident outside Calvaria after the choir practice. I suppose you heard about it. No. What happened? Really, I imagined it would be all over the town by this time. Well, I don't know about that. I've got my work cut out without standing around listening to gossip. And how do I shift that, will you? Put the kettle on. Perhaps Mr. Evans would like a cup of tea. Oh, no, thanks. I don't take between meals. Well, would you like to sit down? Thank you. <coughs> what happened was that your son, without any provocation whatsoever, knocked me down on the public footpath. My son? 
Which one? Um, Yantu. Uh, yeah. Oh! You knew all about this then, did you? Yes, of course. Ang Harad was there at the time. Ang Harad? Oh, I see. It wasn't about the union then? I have no idea what it was about. He seemed very angry about something or another, but uh, he was quite incoherent. I couldn't understand a word he said. I may say that my first instinct was to have him charged with assault. There were plenty of witnesses. I don't think that would be a very good idea. People around here don't think much of that for an idea. No, so I've noticed they prefer taking the law into their own hands. However, I didn't feel like getting involved in a public brawl with one of our own employees. Well, no, of course you didn't. And besides, Yanto's bigger than you are. I merely... You're not fit to be let loose, not fit to be alive, Amanda Quinn, do a thing like that, don't you? You want somebody to go around there and hammer him flat. Hey, what was it for? I was fighting. Did you win? I might have. Good. Was there any match, boy? Not so much now. Hey, five shillings in the box for you tonight. Did you hear that? Have you gone clean off your head or what? I mean, that's what started it, isn't it? Giving him pennies and threepences to go and get himself knocked about. I mean, what next, I wonder? When you promise him gold sovereigns in his coffee and he'll go and get himself killed? Whoever the man is, he must have lost all control of himself to do a thing like this. No, he wouldn't have known it was like this, only owing his wick and... I saw him trying to get his shirt off. It was all stuck to him. But his poor little back had been bleeding. Come on, shift you, my lady. And listen. Next time you start crying about how the men always get the best of it, just you think about that. And remember the things they get the worst of. Hey, what's all this about now? Oh, some fit got into her this morning. Got fed up turning her mind over me. Why couldn't she have stayed on in school, she said. She had as much brains as any of them. So I have. As much as Hugh. I did, though, to start with. Only when Hugh was reading books and the other boys were playing, I was always washing dishes or something. Sometimes I wish it was me that went up the mountain with you that day. Oh, you do, do you? I suppose you'd like to come back with black eyes and bleeding like this one by here. 